Welcome to Naming, Lecture 4-1. We will start with binary ionic compounds. This is part one of a two-part series on binary ionic compounds, followed by another lecture on molecular compounds. We'll start with a simple definition, and that is of a compound, which is a substance composed of atoms of two or more elements to distinguish it from a molecule in which the atoms can be the same element. They are in a definite arrangement and held together by chemical bonds. The compounds generally cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical means. However, the individual atoms in the compound can be separated and rearranged by chemical processes. In ions, we have two types. We have cations and anions. And I sometimes refer to these uh, from my days of teaching in Louisiana as cations and anions. That is, when it's time to go away from home, you go on a cation. And you put in your stew, your onions. Well, cations are ions with a positive charge. A monatomic cation is a single atom that has more protons than electrons due to the loss of one or more electrons from the atom. For example, the sodium cation has 11 protons, only 10 electrons giving it a net charge of positive 1. All cations will have a positive charge whether monatomic or polyatomic. Anions are ions with a negative charge. A monatomic anion is a single atom that has more electrons than protons due to the gain of one or more electrons. For example, the anion of chlorine, called chloride, has 17 protons and 18 electrons, thus having a net negative charge of minus one. Polyatomic anions also have negative charges and we will discuss those later. So here's a look at some of the monatomic ions and polyatomic ions. I've already mentioned a few of the monatomic ones. Here's just some more examples. Sodium, chloride, calcium, oxide, aluminum and nitride. The polyatomic ions will have at least two and usually more atoms in them. For example, OH minus hydroxide, CN minus cyanide, NH4 plus ammonium, and NO3 minus nitrate. We will get to know these polyatomic ions a lot better in the next presentation. The common monatomic cations are separated into two different types. The type 1 cations, as you can see down here in its definition, have only one defined cationic charge and do not need a Roman numeral to designate what the charge is. For example, we'll start out with the group one metals. Sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium all have a plus one charge. We do not find them in nature with other charges. Group two metals have two plus charge, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. And now before I get into the transition metals, I have to introduce the type 2 cations. The type 2 cations have multiple possible cationic charges and require a Roman numeral designation for their charge. So back to the transition metals. There are six that we designate as type 1 metals. 
They are scandium and yttrium, 3 plus, zirconium at 4 plus, silver is 1 plus, and zinc and cadmium are 2 plus. All the other transition metals have multiple charges and have to be designated by a Roman numeral. For example, here, the two chromium cations, the one that's 3 plus, we call chromium 3, and the one that is 6 plus is chromium 6. And the post transition metals are also type 2 metals. They are a small group of metals on the periodic table just after the transition metals. These metals are gallium, indium, and tin, thallium, lead, and bismuth. So there are only six of them. And what I'm seeing here as I look at this uh, common monatomic cations is that I left one out. Over in group 13, above the post-transition metals, is aluminum. Aluminum is a 3-plus monatomic cation that is type 1. In working with the monatomic cations, it's probably easier to memorize the type 1 cations as opposed to the type 2 cations. Well, let's see what you understand about ions. The first cation here is aluminum 3 plus. It is the aluminum 27 isotope. So let's see, how many protons do you have? Hopefully you came up with 13 from the atomic number. Neutrons. Hopefully you come up with 14 neutrons. As the 27 up here designates the mass number, total number of protons and neutrons, subtract out 13 for the number of protons, and you get 14. The charge is 3 plus, meaning that there are three fewer electrons than protons. So if there are 13 protons, and we're losing three, electrons, we end up with 10 electrons in orbit. So you can either do it as a thought process, as we just did, or there's a formula here at the bottom. The number of electrons equals Z, that is the atomic number, the number of protons, minus the charge. So in this case, 13 minus 3 gives you 10 electrons. Now let's look at the selenide anion. In particular, selenide 78. How many protons? Well, if you guessed right, you would have gotten 34 from the atomic number. Protons? Hopefully you come up with 44 by taking 78 and subtracting 34 from it. And then finally, the number of electrons. Uh, let's use the formula at the bottom. So number of electrons equals Z, the atomic number, 34, minus a charge of minus 2. So that's basically adding 2, so we get 36 protons.
pardon me, electrons. We will find when we look at the monatomic anions that when we add up all the total electrons in them, there will be electrons corresponding to a noble gas. So for example, uh, number 36 here is the noble gas after selenium, which is krypton. And again, I emphasize this will be true of all the monatomic anions. Well, let's look at naming the ions and ionic compounds. Ionic compounds consist of a combination of cations and anions. The formula is typically the same as the empirical formula, however there are a few exceptions. The total sum of the charges on the cations and the anions in the formula unit must equal zero. So basically what we're looking at is we take the subscript of the cation and multiply it by the charge on the cation and we add to it the subscript of the anion multiplied by the negative charge on the anion and that should equal zero. Well here are the monatomic anions. These anions end in IDE. But as we shall see later, the suffix IDE is not wholly confined to monatomic anions. We'll, we'll also see it in some polyatomic anions such as hydroxide, peroxide, and cyanide. However, the anions of the nonmetals and some of the metalloids are shown below in this table with their appropriate names. I'm going to start over here in group 17. All the elements in group 17 are missing one electron from having a full noble gas electron configuration. They pick up that one electron and these are all minus one in charge. They are fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodide. In group 16, all the elements here are missing two electrons in order to get to a noble gas electron configuration. They pick up those two electrons and hence they have a negative two charge. And these are oxide, sulfide, selenide, and telluride. In group 15, these elements need three electrons to have a noble gas electron configuration and therefore are minus three in charge. And they are nitride, phosphide, and arsenide. And finally, in group 14, we have a couple. Uh, they are minus four, as you would expect. They are carbide and silicide. Again, back to the cations of the representative metals. As stated before, these cations generally have only one charge and are termed type one cations. They do not need a Roman numeral to designate their charge. They are group one metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. The group two metals are plus two, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Oh, and here is the aluminum that I forgot on the previous slide. It is plus three. Specifically looking at the cations of the transition metals, most of these can have multiple different charges and are termed type 2 cations. 
These require a Roman numeral to designate their charge. You may have to reacquaint yourself with Roman numerals, especially those for the numbers 1 through 7. Here are a couple examples. Chromium with a 3 plus is called chromium 3. Chromium with a 6 plus is called chromium 6. Manganese 2 plus, manganese 2, manganese 4 plus is 4. Here in the space between the paragraph and the examples, I wrote the Roman numerals for you from 1 through 8. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and note that 4 and 6 look an awful lot alike, just that the I is on a different side. Here is 7, and here is 8. The cations of the post-transition metals. In the total view on the previous slide, these are gallium, indium, thallium, tin, lead, and bismuth. These also can have multiple charges and are type 2 cations, requiring a Roman numeral. Please note that the aluminum is not a post-transition metal. It is above them. The post-transition metals, luckily they tend to only have two different charges and those charges are uh, fairly easy to get acquainted with. I will use the elements in period six, thallium, lead, and bismuth as our examples to see how the electron configuration and the charges coordinate. First, uh, thallium. Thallium has a electron configuration of 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, and 6p1. Because the f and the d subshells are completely filled, they generally do not participate in forming a cation. So we can eliminate the 6P to end up with 6S2 and again I'm going to ignore the F and D subshell to give it a plus one charge or for the three plus charge we have no S and no P electrons. Next is lead. Lead is in group 14. Its electron configuration is 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, and 6p2. To get lead 2 plus, we eliminate the two p electrons and are left with the 6s2 and the f and d subshells. For lead 4, we lose the 6s2 and the 6p2 and are only left with the two completely filled subshells of the f and the d. And finally, Let's look at bismuth. Bismuth has an electron configuration of 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, and 6p3. Loss of the p electrons gives bismuth 3 plus and the loss of the five electrons in the p subshell and the s orbital 
gives bismuth 5 plus. There are six transition metals that are considered type 1 and do not require the Roman numeral. These are from group 3, scandium 3 plus and yttrium 3 plus. Zirconium in group 4 is a 4 plus. Moving over to group 11, silver is a 1 plus. And in group 12, zinc and cadmium are both 2 plus. In the next slide, I've shown the relative positions of these six cations in the periodic table, with scandium, yttrium, and zirconium on the far left in the upper left corner, and silver, cadmium, and zinc on the far right in the upper right hand corner of the transition metals. Here are the six type 1 elements in the transition metals. These three over here on the left are in the upper left corner. And these three on the right are in the upper right hand corner of the transition metals. Scandium and yttrium are in group three. Their three plus charge corresponds to their group number. Zirconium is a four plus. It corresponds to its group number. Silver, even though it's in group 11, it is a 1 plus, the last digit. And zinc and cadmium are in group 12. They're plus 2, like their last digit. And what this really corresponds to in their electron configuration, for example, zinc is 4s 2, 3, D, 10, and removing of the two electrons from the S subshell gives us a full D subshell, which is stable. In naming binary ionic compounds, the sum total of the cationic or plus charges and the anionic or negative charges must equal zero because we write their formulas as if they were neutral compounds. The following are required. Given two elements, determine the chemical formula. Given two elements, determine the chemical name. Given a chemical formula, determine the chemical name. And given a chemical name, determine the chemical formula. So there's quite a bit in the naming of binary ionic compounds. Let's first look at the chemical formula for aluminum and sulfur. First we determine that aluminum is the cation because it's a metal. It is a type 1 cation Therefore, it's simply called aluminum in the naming. The anion is the nonmetal here. It is a 2 minus, being in group 16, and is called sulfide. When combining the elements together, the aluminum's subscript is given the charge number for sulfur, which is 2, and the sulfur is given the charge number of the aluminum, which is 3, both of these without their signs. As a result, we have Al2S3. If those two have a multiple in common, we would reduce them. If their charges were equal in number, we would just simply put them together as a single compound without subscripts. The name would be aluminum for the aluminum and sulfide for the anion of sulfur. Note, type 2 cations will have a charge designation. 
So let's uh, have some naming practice here. We're going to find the formulas and give the names. And the first one, zinc, is a type, two, type 1 cation in the transition metals. It gets a 2 plus charge. Chlorine is in group 17. It gets a minus 1 charge. And the formula, we put the 2 from the zinc as a subscript of chlorine. And the number for chlorine is 1, and we don't put 1s as subscripts. So the formula is ZnCl2, and the name zinc chloride. Next is manganese 2 and oxygen. Manganese is MN. There's no guessing about the charge because the 2 designation tells us the charge is 2 plus. Oxygen is in group 16. It's a 2 minus. Combining those two together because they have the same type of charge, just different signs. We just combine it one to one. MNO is manganese two chloride. Next, we have nitrogen and calcium. The metal is calcium, so I threw you a little twist on this one. Calcium is a group 2 metal. It is 2 plus. Nitrogen is a group 15 nonmetal. It's in 3 minus called nitride. Combining them together, the calcium gets the 3 from the nitrogen. The nitrogen gets the 2 from the calcium, and it is calcium nitride. Next, we have iodine and iron 3. The metal is iron 3. The anion is iodide with a minus one charge. Formula, Fe does not get a subscript because there's only one of them. Iodine gets a subscript of three from the iron. And the name is iron three iodide. The last one here is phosphorus and scandium. Again, I kept with the theme of putting the metal second so that you would have to think which one is the metal. Scandium is one of those type one cations in the transition metals. It is in group three, it is three plus. Phosphorus is in group 15, right under nitrogen. It is called phosphide, and it is a 3 minus charge. Putting them together, S, C, and P. No subscripts, because they have the same but opposite charges. And the name is scandium. Oop, my writing's getting off a little bit here. Uh, phosphide.
Next, once we're given a chemical formula, we have to determine the name. Remember the name has the cation first and the anion last. For example, in Ni2Se3, nickel is the cation and the anion is selenium. For the metal, we first have to determine if it's a type 1 or a type 2 cation. If it is type 2, we have to determine the charge on the cation. Nickel is a transition metal and not one of the six type 1 cations. And again, I'll remind you, they are scandium, yttrium, zirconium, silver, cadmium, and zinc. So, we have to determine the charge on the nickel. Look at it this way. The selenium has a negative 2 charge. And since there are three of those, the total net charge negative is negative 6. Hence, the nickel will have to balance out negative 6 with plus 6. But nickel is not plus 6 because there are two of them. So we take the plus 6 and divide it by 2, and we get that nickel is 3 plus, called nickel 3. And the name, therefore, is nickel 3 selenide. Well, let's determine some chemical names. In the first one, the element is sodium for the metal. And it is a, yes, type 1, so we don't need a Roman numeral. And the name of the anion, the anion of nitrogen, is nitride. Sodium nitride. Next, we have cadmium and oxygen, which is oxide. The question is, is cadmium a type 1 or a type 2 metal? It is right beneath zinc in group 12. It is a transition metal. However, it is one of the six that are type 1. Therefore, it does not need a Roman numeral. This one is simply cadmium oxide. The next is molybdenum and sulfur. The sulfur part is easy because it's sulfide. And the spelling of molybdenum is not easy. It's like molly b denum Is molybdenum a type 1 or 2 type 2 cation? Well, the answer is it's a transition metal. It is not one of our six designated type 1 cations in the transition metals. Therefore, it needs a Roman numeral. So what is the Roman numeral? Sulfurs, as sulfides, have a negative 2 charge. And there are two of them. For a total of negative 4. So a single molybdenum has to balance that out with a plus 4. So molybdenum is molybdenum 4 sulfide. Next, we have mercury and phosphorus, which is phosphide. With the mercury, we have to determine its charge because it is a type 2 cation. The phosphorus is phosphide. With mercury, there's actually a simple way 
to determine the charge, but I will do that after I go through the usual way to avoid confusion. So for phosphorus, it has a three minus charge. There are two of those. The total negative charge is six minus. So the mercury has to have a net charge of six plus. There are three of them giving them a two plus charge. So this is mercury two phosphide. Now why I say this uh, has an easier way, when mercury has an odd number on it, it's always mercury two, simply because the mercury one cation is a polyatomic cation. It is HG2, two plus, and comes in multiples of two. Therefore, mercury one cannot be a, or cannot have an odd number. And then finally we have yttrium. And chloride. And the question is, does yttrium need a Roman numeral or not? It's a transition metal, but it is one of the six type ones. Therefore, it requires no Roman numeral. The name, yttrium chloride. Finally, given a chemical name, determine the chemical formula. So, we have to convert the name of the cation to its ionic formula, and then convert the name of the anion to its formula, and then combine them as we have previously done. Strontium fluoride. To determine whether or not it's a type 1 or a type 2 metal is fairly easy. There's no Roman numeral. It's type 1. Strontium to group 2 is plus 2. Fluoride is the anion of fluorine, which is in group 17. It's F minus. Thus we get the subscript for the strontium is 1, because of the 1 negative fluoride, and the subscript on the fluoride is 2 from the 2 plus charge on the strontium. Well, now it's time for some practice. Lead 2 nitride. Guess what? Lead 2 is a type 2 cation. It is Pb2 plus. Nitride, group 15, in 3 minus. Combine them, Pb3, and N2. Potassium iodide, potassium, K, plus. From group 1, iodide, I minus, from group 17, put them together, Ki. Indium 3 oxide, I N 3 plus, O 2 minus, indium gets the 2 from the oxide, oxygen gets the 3 from the indium. Sodium arsenide, in a plus. Arsenic is the third element down in group 15. So it's A, S, 3, minus. Subscript for sodium is 3 from the arsenide. And the subscript for arsenic is 1 from the sodium. And then finally we have tungsten 4 sulfide 
1 before the V, or an I before the V, is 4. So tungsten 4, remember tungsten is W, 4 plus, and sulfide is 2 minus. Putting them together, we get W2S4, but since we can divide each of these by 2 to get the empirical formula, we end up with WS2 for tungsten for sulfide. And this concludes part one for naming with polyatomic anions. That will start in part two.